good to see you tonight. Welcome back to church. Let's stand together. Man, what a good crowd on this Sunday night. So good to see each of you. Let's lift our voices as we begin tonight. I stand amazed. And even as, as, as I was just walking up just now, looking at these things right in front of us, this uh, number board, the Bible, this plaque for both shields and all, thinking back to this morning, I stand amazed at what God has done in this place for these last, again, 125 years, but I'm so excited about what he is doing today and what he will do in the future. Aren't you excited? God is moving in a, in a special way in this place, and I stand amazed in his presence. Let's sing this good hymn together tonight as we begin. Here we go. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene.
Father, tonight as we've gathered together once again, we simply want to pour out our praise because you're so worthy of it. God, you are so great. The word awesome can hardly even describe you. Tonight we've gathered once again to worship. I thank you for a, a great crowd tonight that we can just gather together, fellowship, sing, hear from your word. Father, we love you. I pray you'd meet with us now tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take a quick moment. Tell somebody you're glad to see him. Ushers, would you make your way down front? We'll take up an offering tonight. Tell somebody you're glad to see him. Thank you for your faithful giving. Let me remind you that evangelism training is happening tonight. And so here in just a moment, I'm going to dismiss those of you who are needing to be a part of that. If you are planning to work Vacation Bible School and have not gone through that training, please do that tonight. Please, when you leave to go downstairs to the teen room to, to do that, make sure you take your driver's license with you. We're, make, we're, we're rerunning everybody through our background check system, and so we need that license number um, so we can steal your identity. And then, some, sorry, that took a minute to get a little laugh there, but um, no, make sure you take your license with you down there so they can run those background checks. Uh, be reminded, we've got a red, white, and blue bash next Sunday night. That's going to be right out here. Uh, actually, really, the whole outside of the property is going to be covered in uh, people and food trucks and fireworks. We're going to have a lot of fun. And if you've never been a part of that, you'll want to be here next Sunday night. It is a lot of fun. If you are helping volunteer there, we have a meeting tonight right after church that we need you to be a part of. And if you have not signed up to volunteer, just come to the meeting anyways. We won't, I promise you we'll not keep you long at all. But we, we need some volunteers. We need people to help set up. We need people to help run trash during the event. We need some people to help man some of the inflatables for the kids. We, we have a lot of different areas that we need. So if you are willing to help with that, please stay tonight. We'll, we're going to meet right down here where the teens are sitting. We're going to meet right here tonight, right after the service, for just a few moments. And uh, uh, it, it, listen, be praying. That's an opportunity it's a great opportunity for us to be a blessing to our community. There's a lot of people that come to that that never step foot on this property any time uh, throughout the year. And so if we can be the hands and feet of Jesus and uh, share the love of Christ, share the gospel, it would be an awesome opportunity to do that. And so be praying for that event. We don't want to just, listen, we don't want to just gather together and shoot fireworks off just because it's fun and because we get to celebrate freedom, although that's good. Listen, we get to be salt and light and share the love of Christ with our community. So be inviting friends, neighbors, family members to come and join us next Sunday night. But let's, uh, let's, let's put our best foot forward and, and share the love of Christ with our community simply through the avenue of having a fun night with fireworks. Let's pray together. Stay standing. We'll dismiss everybody to training in just a second. Father, again, thank you for the, the opportunity to give. And I, I, I do pray as we look forward to events like we have next Sunday night. God, we want and would ask you just to be all over that. We don't want to just have an event to have an event because it's fun, because it's July 4th weekend and we get to celebrate, although we're thankful for that. Very thankful for our freedom, thankful for our country, thankful for a space of grace that you have given us once again. But Lord, help us to take advantage of an opportunity to love on our community a little bit to love on some of our first responders that, that'll be up here that night. and uh, Lord, I pray that we would be living, breathing, walking, talking examples of the gospel next Sunday night. I pray for a wonderful event. Pray for tonight, Lord, again, you just meet with us, be with our pastor, strengthen his voice tonight as he preaches your word. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.
Let's stay standing as they pass the plates. If you need to head down to the teen room to be part of the evangelism training, do that now. You can head, easiest way to get there is this door over here or that stairwell over there. But head downstairs. I know there's several that still need to partake in that, so you're more than welcome to go take your driver's license with you and go partake in that training, please, so that we can have everybody ready to, to teach. And, well, and it doesn't matter what area you're working in Bible school. This is for everybody, security, nursery, crafts, teachers, musicians, everybody be a part of that. So head downstairs to the teen room if you would, and that'd be great. Let's sing together before Pastor comes to preach tonight. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express. to Philippians chapter number 3, and then, I'm sorry, Colossians chapter 3, and then just hold your place there, Colossians chapter number 3, we'll read it in a moment, but I've got one other thing that I want to do before that, um, the week before last, I just had one of those moments, you ever have one of those moments where you just know the Lord just kind of walked right into your presence? And those are unique moments in our life that are oftentimes 
etched into our memory. I was almost 700 miles away from home, sitting in a motel room in Tampa. I had been getting ready that morning and um, was putting my clothes on, and I had my phone playing on Apple Music, and a song came on, and I had never heard the song in my life. Didn't know the song, did not know who sang the song, didn't know the lyrics to the song, but it just so happened that I had sit down at the desk there in the uh, motel room, and I had just got my clothes on, opened my Bible, had some time to spare, and was just doing my morning devotionals before uh, my ride that was taking me from my, where I was to where I was going had got me. And so you got to imagine, just get the setting here, because I want you to be familiar with the setting before I play the song in just a moment. I'm sitting, it's just me and the Lord. My wife's not there, my kids are not there. Uh, nobody's there, just me and the Holy Spirit. I've got a Bible on a desk in front of me opened up. And I don't even, i got to be honest, I really don't even remember where I was open. I know that I was in the book of Psalm, but I don't remember the Psalm because I was so um, um, taken back by this song that I had never heard And little did I know that the song that I heard was actually Psalm 100. And um, I came back from that trip to Tampa, and last week we sat in a staff meeting, and uh, I shared with our team what the Lord had done in my heart, and one of those moments where God just kind of put his finger on something in my mind, and I asked Rob, I said, you know, after the week of July the 3rd, um, I know we won't be here on Sunday night that week, but the following week, I want us to do something that will be very intentional. I want to do it for a minimum of six to eight weeks, but it may last longer than that. I don't know, just whatever the Lord wants. But I, I heard this psalm, Psalm 100 to be specific. And um, I've asked him to play the song before I preach. I'm going to make a deal if you all will promise not to file any kind of formal complaint to the pastor. I'm only going to preach 10 minutes after this song. If you all won't complain about it, all right? 10 minutes. Listen to this song. Do this. I know this could be weird, but I'm going to tap into your inner side for a moment. Close your eyes. Block everything else out of your mind. Imagine you and the Lord, just you and the Lord. Eyes closed. Listen to the power in the words of this song. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Come worshiping before the throne of God.
I sat there in that motel room, almost numb in that moment, and it dawned on me for the first time in a long time that so many times in my life I open the pages of God's Word to check it off my list of things that I'm supposed to do, failing to remind myself that every time I do it, I am literally entering into the courts of His praise and His thanksgiving. And God used that moment in my life. I got on an airplane and I started putting notes in my cell phone. And this was the thought, this was the the moment that God gave me. I had this question, why are 21st century churches not singing through the Psalms with any kind of regularity? Why are we not doing that? Why are we missing that? Because the last two weeks of my life, I have intentionally, through Apple Music or YouTube, tried to find songs that were penned directly from the Psalms. You think, come on, preacher, this is a New Testament church. With all of our advancements and proficiencies in the world of music, and you want to sing dull, dusty, dead Psalms? Oh, friend, let me tell you something. There ain't been an artist since the psalmist David that's wrote songs with so much theological truth. There's not been a composer put together lyrics or a melody that's more meaningful than that, that which is recorded in the pages of God's Word. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you a text here where the Apostle Paul not just on one occasion, but on multiple occasions, is going to command that the New Testament church sings psalms. The singing of psalms is a biblical command. It's, a spiritual, it's spiritually needed, and it's profoundly relevant. As a matter of fact, singing psalms may be the most powerful means to a revival of biblical worship that this world has seen in a long time. I want to show you this, chapter 3, verse number 14. Now Paul is talking about putting on the new man, and he says to the church at Colossus, above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now, now listen, do you find it interesting that he delineates three different ways to do this. If this was only about singing, he could have just put the last sentence, singing with grace in your hearts. But he said there is an avenue in which you can do your singing and it is best done through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Now, I want to show you tonight why we ought to be singing some psalms. This is not exhaustive, but I want to give you three reasons that I jotted down in a note section of an iPhone on an Allegiant airplane somewhere between Tampa and Tennessee. Number one, the New Testament commands us to sing psalms. The New Testament commands us to sing psalms. He admonishes this church in the first century to use psalms. Now, the word psalm literally means, watch this, a pious song with striking chords that has been given by God. It is the psaltery, if you will. You have a collection of those almost right in the middle of your Bible. And then Paul says, don't just sing psalms. That's a New Testament command. But he said, sing hymns. That word hymn in the Greek, hymnos, means a sacred song in praise and recognition of God. 
He said, but after you've sang psalms and you've sang hymns, then he says, sing spiritual songs. It's a Greek word, ode. Literally means an ode to breath. What is a spiritual song? Buckle your seatbelt. It is a short, quaint, meaningful form of worship. Get ready, get ready. That is often repetitive. What Paul said is, is there's three ways that you can do this. You can sing psalms as they're recorded in your Bible. You can sing hymns that were written in recognition of God and who God is. Or you can sing these odes to breath which are short recognitions. Do you realize that tonight we have so far accomplished two out of three? Hymns, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. We have sang a spiritual song. I know some of you, I don't like that, it's repetitive. It's our breath in your lungs. Great are you, Lord. That is a spiritual song. Paul said, I don't want you to just sing the stuff from years ago, recorded in the Bible, the stuff that was written in the late 1800s or the 1930s, but I want you to sing the old, the new, as long as it's true, the New Testament commands us to sing spiritual songs, hymns, and psalms. Here's what Paul says. He says the psalms are indispensable means to the discipling of believers admonishing one another in psalms no wonder the psalms loom everywhere you turn in the New Testament by the way did you know that the psalms is quoted in your New Testament more than any Old Testament book of your Bible because the writers of the New Testament knew the importance of the psalms that were penned by men like Moses and David and Asaph and so many others. Number one, why do we sing psalms? Because the New Testament commands us to sing psalms. Number two, psalms conveys the breadth, not the breath, the breadth of the Christian experience. If you know anything about your psalms, you know that the psalms is a plethora of human emotions. From Psalm 1 all the way up to Psalm 150, you can find that every song includes things like this, an earnest plea to God to meet your need. Some psalms are rebuking the ungodly. Other psalms rehearse all about the goodness of God. Some are rousing people to righteousness. Others are sighs of distress. While others are unending pursuits after the holiness of God. Some of them sigh in distress. But others resound in a resilient hope. You read through the Psalms, they reflect on the past. They ponder the present. And oftentimes... As in Psalm 24, they anticipate the future. They assume the first person, sometimes the second person, and sometimes the third. There are personal elements like Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. But there are corporate elements where all of Israel would march to the tabernacle. Where on that march up the stairs they would ascend as in the Psalms of Ascensions. And they would corporately sing praises unto the Lord. Sometimes they're urgent and restless. Lord, how many times have you come across a psalm that brought calm and peace? I've, I've been in a spirit of prayer most of the day, honestly, not trying to sound spiritual, but many times today I've prayed for Miss Charlotte King. Today's a hard day for her. Five years ago this day her husband went to be with the Lord. And I text her this afternoon and I said, Charlotte, I know today's been a hard day, but before you settle for the night... Grab your Bible and read some Psalms because the Psalms have a way of bringing such a deep, settled sense 
of tranquility in the, even the most distressed soul. They simply express many facets of the Christian life. I sometimes hear people complain, not so much here, but I hear people complain of the shallowness of church music. If you're complaining that, it's because you've never been through the Psalms. Because there's nothing shallow about it. Why sing them? Because they convey, they encompass the whole Christian experience. I think for too long the church has depended on sappy or triumphant, happy, clappy, pick-me-up songs that are designed to probably move our feet before it moves our heart. But we desperately need something that changes us. And the music that's happened in churches it doesn't seem to be doing that much anymore. Who are the Psalms for? They're for that believer that's struggling, believing a certain promise that God made them. Amen. Let me tell you what the, who the Psalms are for. It's for the couple that is enduring the sorrow of barrenness. And though they've begged for God to give them a child, Psalm can meet some of those needs. It's for the teenager battling anxiety. It's for the saint that's been betrayed even by his best of friends. It's from the psalm that's that we learn to confess sin. We learn to celebrate the goodness of God. And we learn to fall in love with his righteousness. I had this thought and I jotted it down. There exists no godly emotion that is unexpressed in the book of Psalms. It covers the whole Christian experience. Number three, and I'm finished. Psalms connects us to the depth of theological truth in relation to God's character. You know what the psalm will do? It'll show you over and over how the Lord is your shepherd. He's your buckler. He's your high tower. The Psalms will remind you of the great theological truths of who God is and what God has done. And oftentimes you can find the human penman at the lowest place of despair. But when their mind was turned back to the reality of who God was, they go from sorrow to triumph. They go from depression to deliverance. All in the matter of one song that are centered around the depth of the character. Of who God is. <laughs> Last night I. You can begin to softly play. Told you I'd do it. Last night I was sitting. About two o'clock in the morning. In preparation for today. And. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to let you in on something. I was anxious about what I was going to preach. Y'all probably don't know this, but in this day and age in which we live, preachers that want to preach on the controversial subjects in America like homosexuality and abortion, almost every single time, and you can package it up with more compassion than anybody in the world but at the end of the day it never fails somebody on the outside will Facebook they'll email you're bigoted you're mean spirited you're out of touch with the 21st century get with the program you're closed minded you'll never reach people with that spirit or attitude when, we're, when the omnipotent almighty hand and finger of God reaches down and puts it on your heart and begins to massage your mind maybe only a preacher understands it but generally speaking when you know that one Sunday is going to be dealing with the hard truth the Saturday night before you really don't get a whole lot of rest I walked in this morning one of our Sunday school teachers said oh preacher you look so tired because I went to bed at 3.30 and I am tired but this morning I got up and I made me a, a cup of coffee and I sit in my office 
And as I do most mornings, not every morning, but as I do most mornings, I flip my Bible open to the Psalms. I don't have any regular reading plans that I use. I don't start at the first one and just go until I finish them. I just, Lord, whatever you have for me this day, give it to me. I sit down in my office this morning, 7.30. Laid my Bible on my desk, flipped it open. I marked it this morning, and the marker is still there. This is where it fell. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive against me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of the shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Draw the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. And say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. And boy, something fluttered down in that little eight by eight room. Sit down at the desk with me. Gave me a supercharge and I read just a little bit longer. And here's what the psalmist said. My soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. That's what the psalm will do to you. The psalms will connect you to something that connects you to God and often delivers you from some of the darkest, most difficult seasons of your life. More times than one, I've seen God do this. And I've got to be honest with you, I don't know how people can survive the storms without the songs that these men wrote. I, I found something just today that I found so intriguing. So intriguing. Here's what it said. It said, when an earthquake sent some fourth graders huddling, huddling under their desk, a young 10-year-old Theo Stam- Stamulus began to pray and sing Psalm 46. His voice could be heard reverberating through the halls of his elementary school as the whole earth was shaking and reeling and books were falling and desks were turning over. But the voice of young Theo could be heard. We will not fear, though the earth give away. Theo's dad, Joel, is the worship pastor at Wasilla Baptist Church. And a woman from the church had told Joel that his young son, or from the school, had told her that his young son had helped an entire class by simply singing a song from Psalm 46. The irony is that they had Locked it in his memory bank because Wasilla Bible Church spent three and a half years memorizing and singing through the entire book of Psalms. They began in 2015 with Psalm chapter 1 and they sung through 2018 when they finished it. We sang one psalm a week. And for Psalm 119, the longest psalm, we sang one stanza for 22 weeks. We ended at Psalm 50 on September the 2nd, 2018. Little did I know that memorizing a psalm through song would catapult my little boy to be a spirit of comfort to a fourth grade class that was riddled with so much fear. I told Rob Monday, I said, Rob, I I don't want to put the heat or pressure on you. And I won't preach on Psalms every Sunday night, but I said for the next few weeks, I want you to pray through and I want you to find a Psalm. I want you to meditate on that Psalm. I want you to make some comments about that Psalm. And then I want you to lead our church in how to worship by singing through that psalm. We're not going to go and 
mechanical order. We're not going to start at one and go through. We're just going to follow the Holy Ghost. And we're going to learn to sing the Psalms. Some Psalms will be sang directly from the Bible. Others will be songs like tonight that were written. Paraphrased somewhat. But share the sentiment of the human penman who under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost sit down and wrote these songs as God gave it to him. I'm going to let you remain seated, but I'm going to ask you to do one thing. I'm going to ask you both tonight, the week after next, the week after that, the week after that, the week after that. Sometimes we'll do a couple psalms tonight. It's to simply allow your mind to meditate on the truth of what you can learn about God. And as you learn that truth, my prayer would be that the end result and the return would be that you would worship Him because of the truth that are in these songs. So would you open your mind at this moment? Would you open your heart? As Brother Rob comes in just a moment, I, I don't know from one week to the next what psalm he'll sing. I guarantee if we're singing psalms, we're singing the scriptures. And I just, if you got to close your eyes, if you got to stand up, sit down, use an altar, raise your hands or wipe tears. Let's worship God through some psalms over these next few weeks and months. Father, as we enter into this season, God, you really do know my heart. I don't want this to be a formality. I want these people to feel what I felt. in a motel room at about 8 o'clock in the morning Lord in the silence of a place that was foreign to me your sweet Holy Spirit encamped around about me and through the hundredth psalm you reminded me that every time I open my Bible and every time that I go to church and every time that I sing I'm entering into your presence into the courts of your thanksgiving and God I don't ever want to take that lightly so for those that in a moment need to find a place on this altar just to simply worship you from a posture that draws them to their knee for others that find contentment in sitting on their pew simply singing the words from their heart there's some in this room that in order to truly worship you they're going to have to stand to their feet and lift their hands high into the heavens God your praise in the Bible is both vocal and verbal and as we verbalize our worship through singing this first song as Brother Rob comes and draws our hearts into a spirit of worship my prayer God is that you allow us to fill you and to see you as we have come into this moment in which we sense your beautiful presence through the singing of these timeless truths that you've given us to encourage our hearts to cover all aspects of the Christian life and to simply connect theological truths about your character that will carry us through the deepest and darkest days of our life in Jesus name Amen would you worship him brother Rob you come turn to Psalm 42 tonight Psalm 42 I want to encourage you to look along and read along as I read this passage Psalm chapter 42 I'm going to read the whole chapter starts off with the psalm title to the chief musician Mashiel for the sons of Korah. Verse 1 says, As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? 
When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonites from the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep, at the noise of thy water spouts, all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And then in the night, his song shall be with me. And my prayer unto the God of my life. Verse 9, I will say unto God my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Did you catch that verses 10 and 11 sound a a whole lot like verses 4 and 5? He repeated himself. Go back and look. Verse 4, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy, the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Verse 11, same. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Caught a phrase this morning as pastor was preaching. The phrase was this, and I you probably know the verse where it says their their shame was their glory. Don't remember that from this morning? Talking about the world, talking about the heathen, their shame is their glory. When as I was reading this tonight, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my my countenance. Think of the, the, the difference here. You have a world who is saying their shame is their glory. In fact, their what what it is, how they're living, what it is that they are doing is is what is represented. That, that is the glory. That's what you see. That is, the, that is what they have to offer. Listen. As a child of God, I've got nothing except for I'm going to praise Him because He is the, He's the health of my countenance. He is the glory and the lifter of my head. See, friend, this psalm is about hope. It's about hope. As a believer, we have, uh, we use the phrase like Paul did, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But David got it all the way back in the Psalms. Hope thou in God. When there is nowhere else to turn, when there is no, listen, our soul is going to grow weary. Our soul is going to faint. We are going to, listen, we are designed to thirst for something. We are designed to go after something. We have a void that has been built within us that is designed to be filled by someone. Unfortunately, we try to fill it with other things. We try to find things from the external that will fill a void that has been placed there, designed by God himself. The psalmist said, wait a second, I get it. I get it. Like those deers going for that water. My soul longs for you. We're built that way. God built us to desire Him. 
God built us to want a relationship with Him. God built us for fellowship with Him. The psalmist gets it. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have people coming against us. We're going to have issues. We're going to have trials. We're going to have, we're going to fight the world, the flesh, the devil. But friend, hope thou in God. And as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Why? Because you alone are my heart's desire. You're my strength. My shield. So would you, you, I chose a song that we, most of us are going to know tonight. Simple chorus. As the deer pants for the water. Some of these songs we're going to learn. uh, There's some incredible songs out there, but we're going to have to teach them and we'll learn them together. But I know a lot of you know this one. So straight from Psalm 42, would you lift your heart and mind as you sing this together? in prayer as the deer headed for the water so my soul longeth after thee you alone are my heart's desire and I long to work for your word giving us a song book and Lord I, I'll be the first to confess that I don't sing through that enough and Lord thank you for the vision, the passion you put on our pastor's heart to do this Lord may it radically change our worship simply singing your word back to you like like it's been commanded. Uh, Lord, I eagerly look forward to the the next several weeks and 
looking into your word and gathering the truths from these psalms and worshiping you through them. God, we're grateful for how you crafted such an incredible opportunity for us to simply worship you straight from your word. Thank you for the opportunity tonight even to gather together. You're so good. Thank you for meeting with us today. God, help us this week. We're going out into a a world that's desperately needing truth, that are searching for hope. God, give us the opportunity to be light this week. Give us opportunity to share the gospel. This opportunity to show your love in a lost and dying world. Make a difference. Do what you've called us to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together as we're dismissed tonight. Thank you for being here. What a great day. Reminder, we've got a volunteers meeting tonight for those who are helping us next Sunday night. We're going to meet right here where the teens sit. In just a couple of minutes, we'll get started. We will not keep you long at all. But if you could help us with next week's event, please stick around. Meet us right here before we dismiss. As you probably are well aware, it takes a lot of volunteers to pull off the event we're about to pull off. Many of you have already registered. Some of you haven't. We're going to give you a three-minute break and a five- to six-minute meeting. So if y'all could leave me a microphone for ten minutes and we're done. We're out of here. It's over. So if I could clear this front section out, any of y'all that are willing to help us this coming Sunday, we'll give you some quick details as to what we need. We'll fly through it. I promise you. They all lifted their hands towards heaven. God is so good. Thanks for visiting with us tonight. Thank you for logging on and watching our services today. We pray that it's been a great blessing to you. If you've watched our service today and something has touched your heart and you have questions or in need of counsel, please take the opportunity to call our offices at 865-688-7674. As much as we enjoy having you as part of our online audience, we would love for you to come and visit us in person sometime soon at Clear Springs Baptist Church. We hope to see you next time. Family of faith are three words that truly describe the wonderful relationships we share at Clear Springs. We want you and your family to come and feel at home and be part of our family. At Clear Springs, you're surrounded by a caring, loving family who will help you and your family grow, sharing the good times, but also helping you shoulder the tough times. We strive to reach out to people, create forever friendships, and share the love of Jesus with those around us. Whether you are a large family or a family of one, we invite you to be part of our family at 